Remember when I told you that I wasn't going to be concerned about the housing market until we saw mortgage rates at about 45 to 5%? Well, we're here. What is up, everybody? Jay Costa here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I wanted to give you an overview of where we're at in the housing market and where I think we're going from here after the Federal Reserve's most recent interest rate hike. With interest rates spiking substantially, I thought it would be important to go over the data so you can make an informed decision if you are a buyer or a seller in this market. But first, you guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning into the video. If you get any value or enjoyment out of this video at all, please consider subscribing down below and make sure to smash that like button. It really helps me grow the channel and get to more viewers just like you. So if you weren't already aware, Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve announced that they were going to increase the federal funds rate by a quarter of a percent. This was not unforeseen and generally the stock market as well as the bond market kind of enjoyed and appreciated that information that it was only going to be a quarter percent interest rate hike instead of a half percent interest rate hike, a 50 basis point hike. So the stock market was generally happy, but what does this mean for the housing market? Well, obviously the biggest correlation that the federal funds rate has with the housing market is mortgage rates. The 30 year fixed rate mortgage is closely correlated with the 10 year treasury rate, which has been on a steady up climb since about August of last year, 2021, when it was at an all-time low of 1.15%. This rate steadily increased to about 2% as of February 16th, but then on February 24th, Russia invaded the Ukraine, which caused this rate to plummet down to about 1.68%. But since then, it has skyrocketed all the way up to 2.49% as of the filming of this video. This is the highest the 10-year treasury rate has been since early 2019, which was the last time the Fed decided to raise interest rates. So rates have been at this level somewhat recently, but what is more concerning to me is how quickly the rate has increased and the impact both short-term and long-term that it could have on the housing market. This rise in the 10-year treasury has transferred directly into the 30-year fixed mortgage rate, climbing to a whopping 4.42% as of this video. Again, the highest it's been since early 2019. On March 3rd, that was only three weeks ago, we were at 3.76%. That is an 18% increase in three weeks. We all know the reason why the Fed is deciding to increase interest rates, and that is to, number one, fight inflation. As I've stated in previous videos, I think that increasing interest rates is in a necessary evil in order to cool down the buyer demand in the housing market, get a little bit more of a balanced housing market, a little bit more of a healthy market, and control the housing affordability crisis that we're currently in with housing prices at all time highs. So what does this mean going forward? Well, obviously the higher interest rates go up on a 30 year mortgage, the lower the buyer's purchasing power is. As a general rule of thumb, a 1% increase in a 30 year fixed rate mortgage means about a 10% decrease, decline in the buyer's purchasing power. If a buyer was at first was able to afford a $500,000 house, now they can only be pre-qualified, pre-approved for a $450,000 house. And if you go back to the lows of last year, when the 30-year fixed rate was about 2.7%, now we're up to 4.4%. That is about a 1.7 to 1.8% increase in your 30-year fixed rate mortgage. That is a lot. That means that the buyer's purchasing power is down 17 or 18% already from August of last year. So why haven't home prices decreased by 17%? Well, it doesn't quite work that way. If the buyer's purchasing power decreases by 17% like it has, but the demand is still so far outweighing the supply by let's say 30%, you're still gonna get a general upward trajectory in home prices. But this all assumes that buyer demand is going to continue outweighing the supply. Well, what if it doesn't? With inflation at 40 year high levels, the cost of living has gone up for everybody. You see it everywhere. Gas prices, food prices, the price of utility bills, the price of cars, used cars, new cars, everything is more expensive than it was a year or two ago. Now, if you were smart, the cheap money, the low interest rates would kind of offset the increase in cost of living. But without all time low interest rates, I'm concerned that a lot of buyers are not gonna be so eager to purchase a home going forward. Then you add in all of the other uncertainty that we have going on, geopolitical uncertainty, political uncertainty here at home, 
economic uncertainty, looming recessions. I can go on and on and on. You could see how buyer sentiment can go negative very, very quickly. So where does the housing market go from here? I don't know the future. Nobody does. Short term, meaning like spring or summer of 2022 this year, I think that it's generally going to be more of the same. Buyers are still going to be out there in full force trying to lock in something with a rate in the fours because they see the writing on the wall like we all do and they're betting that rates are going to go even higher from here. And I think you're going to start seeing sellers put their house on the market a little bit more and try to cash out on the all-time high prices and maybe rent for a while to see where the market goes. But here's the thing, generally these rate hikes and increasing mortgage rates don't make a huge effect on the market, on the housing market, until about six months later. So long term, I have some genuine concerns over where housing prices are going to go by the end of this year. If mortgage rates continue to rise at this pace, I see housing prices to go down by the end of this year, by the end of 2022. Sometimes things are very simple. When buyers purchasing power goes down, that means they can't pay as much for a home and it decreases the desire for them to buy a home at all. If mortgage rates hit the five or 6% area, buyer demand will be completely dried up. Home prices will stall or even modestly decline. And all you'll hear about on the news is how home prices are on a downfall. What will that do to both buyer and seller sentiment? Well, we're gonna have a flood of sellers trying to put their house on the market to try to cash out, but they already missed the boat and they're gonna put their house on the market and they are not going to get what they are looking for price-wise. It is also important to point out how home prices are considered when you're buying a home. It all goes through an appraisal. And an appraiser uses usually only about three comparable homes in your area. So all it takes is one home on your block to sell for lower than expected, and bam, that comp is out there, and it's affecting the home prices of all of the homes in that general vicinity. So my point is, things can change very quickly. So what do you do if you're a seller? Well, I've said this in previous videos, and my thoughts are still the same. If you're looking to sell, and you have a legitimate place to move, I would sell as soon as you possibly can. The big if there though, is if you have a place to move. Most people don't have that luxury. Now, I'm not gonna tell you to go sell your house or just go rent something in order to buy something later. I don't like to time the market in anything, whether it's real estate, stocks, or anything like that. I generally give advice based on your personal or your family situation. And if you have a place to move to and you wanna sell, do it now. But if you don't have a place to move to and you're still planning on staying in your current location for another seven to 10 years, just sit tight and let it all play out. Now, if you're a buyer in this market, obviously real estate is super, super local. So talk to your local real estate professional. I'm just giving you general kind of national uh, macro uh, situation here. But generally speaking, unless you could find a really good deal, maybe something off market, I would be holding off on purchasing a home right now because there's just so much uncertainty out there with interest rates going up, inflation going up, energy costs going up, the Russia-Ukraine conflict, and an old senile man at the helm of it all. Did I just say that out loud? These are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. Where do you see the housing market going from here? You could definitely feel like we're at a bit of a precipice here in the housing market. So things can change very quickly, and I will be back next week with some new data for you. Until next time.